think I started recording a little bit too early, but it's fine. Morgan Le Fay. Welcome everyone to Grandmaster God Cape and see we are covering Morgan Le Fay. US Goddess and all that. She's really good, really fun. And honestly, try her out. She's probably one of the most fun mages in the game. Um I was driven away from Camelot and banished, but my return is imminent. All will learn to respect and revere Morgan Le Fay. Just a quick disclaimer. Yeah, I, I'm really new to this character. Well, I kind of got a gist of what she does now, but there may be some things I'll miss because I personally haven't played this god as much as I have the other gods who have been in the game for a while. Then let's go over... Let me just test something real quick. So we've got 25 magical power. A spell most sinister! So that gives 10. Right, so, that, so that's missed bust for me. Because I've re-recorded multiple times to get this part right. So, Empowered Blade. Basically, when she applies a sigil, I'll show you how to do that later, to a god, for each sigil she is applied, she has them... On her little blade here, you see the little um, passive mirror with the five diamonds. Basically, as soon as she applies the sigil, two, she gains two magical power plus point four for level for each symbol. Right? This doesn't this doesn't mean two times by twenty. It's not forty plus zero point four per level. Because I thought it was forty plus. Um, 8, which is how much the symbol um, would give you when it's um, when you're max level. Because if you have a look in the bottom left of my magical thing, it should go to 45, yes, for a unique one. So max, X max rank is 10. Um, per sigil. Right. I'm pretty sure these sigils, these remain, no, ma these remain on Morgan Le Fay indefinitely until she's empowered. Because if I'll show you, I'll prove that point later. Um, at max stacks of uh, sigils, once she's applied all of them, then she comes empowered, which means she gets double the magical power she would get from the passive for ten seconds, and then it would be gone. Right. Let's go over the first ability. It's called... What's it called? Sigil Mastery. Yeah. So, one thing to know about all sigils, they all have the same range in terms of how far you can throw them and how wide they are. The first one... Fires of Fear. Fires of Fear. Um, as you just saw, for zero point, I think it's point, oh, one second, one second, yeah. For one second, when they are hit by the second part. The thing I forgot was to reduce my cooldowns. It's when they're hit by the outer ring at the fear. You don't have to hit two, you don't have to hit them both, you just have to, for the fear, it's just the outer ring. Because as you can see, the smaller circle lands first, and then the uh, circle extends and does another implication of damage. A spell most sinister. And applies whatever the sigil does, and in case this sigil, or I mean in this case, this is, sigil is a fear. For one second, it's really strong. Um, the second one is is a slow field that stays for four seconds on the floor, at all ranks. Kind of like a noob, kind of like a noobus free. Oh, it doesn't. Sorry, I forgot to. Kind of like a noobus free, but without the damage. It doesn't do damage. It's just a slow field, so good for blocking off um, choke points and slowing down contests contesting gods against you like if you were doing red buff and someone's coming to you you can like throw this uh, and it'd be slow for them to come steal it it's like a zoning tool 
It's really good, really strong. Also, it's really good to use off of CC because if someone's stunned and you hit them in the centre with this, they're going to have to walk out of this or jump. But most of the time, you want to use the fear because obviously, longer CC, this is a hard DC. Taste the wicked blade. It's better than a slow. Alright, the third one, um, she throws down a circle, and when it hits an enemy god on the outer ring, she summons oh, a little, my plans have yet to be realized. little minion of herself. Now, I don't know how much HP that, that uh, specific minion has, but what I can tell you is um, it is very, very squishy. It dies in like one over attack. Um, you don't remember hitting the outside ring summons it. You can't just throw it down. I don't understand. You can't just throw it down and it summons. You have to hit someone on the outer ring of this to actually summon the summon the minion. Or you just have to be the outer ring, sorry. No. My plans have yet to be realized. The second hit is A the entire circle. Sinister. But you don't have to hit the first hit for it to Summon the minion is what I mean, like this. Right. She doesn't cast any abilities, by the way. She body blocks. Um, she has a HP bar like a god. Um, sometimes I've been caught off guard thinking it's natural mug and the fae, but it's actually not, it's just a decoy. Mainly because I'm not used to playing against this character as much yet. Right, let's go over a two. So, she summons a dragon, then knocks up enemy gods in the triangle, in the, not triangle, don't know why I said that was a triangle, in the rectangle here, comes up, knocks them up, and then um, knocks back any gods or anything that's in his path. Draco Mortis. Now it's possible to hit both on the same god, but you have to hit on the bank run. Oh, you don't have to hit one in the line. So realistically, if you see if you see where I'm standing, and you see where the dragon comes, arise back, and crush them. It dashes out the first box, first rectangle. Um, where I'm standing, it doesn't dash on the second part, as you see where the little dragon's got a little dash. It doesn't dash on the second part. It starts its dash. Where I'm standing, as you see. Um, so it's possible. Really easy to hit both if you're completely. and crush them. It's got a very long travel time, and you have to read the enemy movement to actually hit this. Um, once you nailed it, though, a few times, you'll you'll get the hang of it. It supplies mark of the spirit. Um, also, I'll give you some tips in a bit on which mark is which. Um, that's easy, an easier way of remembering it. Uh, that's what I mean, right? Morgan um, sends forth this Shroud of Wildfire. Obviously, it does not go through walls. It stops at walls. It does pass through minions, though. It stops at the first enemy god hit, or the first wall hit, or whatever you want to say. Throws forth this. It increases the movement speed to 3 seconds. Up to 24%. 16% at level, level 1. So if I was to throw this, as you see in the bottom left, 518 down here, the bottom left, see movement speed. So you don't have to hit anyone to gain this movement speed, just as soon as you cast it, you can move as fast you can move um, with the extra movement speed. So when you're out of base, you can just throw this and then get to lane quicker. Um, it'll pass through minions, and I'll show you that later. Once it hits the god... A curse of agony! Um, it does like a little dot damage, as you see there. <laughs> right? Embrace the burning shroud. Initial hit. Three, not well, four dots. Okay. Now, one thing to know is you can extend this dot if you carry on basic attacking. Mm. As you see, it lasted longer. And to prove this point, I'm going to check a different bot so I can show you on the um, damage screen. Right. Say we are against Neath, right? Let's 
So we did a max of seven ticks, right? I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure three basics. I mean, one basic increases it by one second. Wait to me. <laughs> yeah, I was right. So you have to hit three. I think it's just three basics. If you hit one, I think it only does one. It should hit. Should be 19. I did 20. That's weird. Because it did four. And each dad did six ticks with one basic. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Four? What time did four? I think it's. I think. Um, two, three, four. Five. Okay, so we did five ticks. So what happened there is you have to basic attack them from the before the first start or when the dots occur. If you basic attack them before like this, only does four ticks. But if you basic attack them as the first tick, it does extra ticks. So. You have to time it right. Embrace the burning shroud. So I throw it again. Sorry, let me try this one instead. A throw it. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, not even five. So you have to hit them. Um, so the basic attack buff only occurs as soon as you can't do it before the ticks occur. You have to do it as the ticks are doing damage. So now, now, as yet from when the first tick hits the god, um, you have to basic attack then to increase the duration, not before. Here, doesn't do anything. Four extra ticks. Right? If I hit, the as the first cloud. tick comes out, it'll do five tick, two, three, four, five. Okay, so per up to three basic attacks. Up to seven seconds worth of dots, so one dot per second. Uh, four seconds at base. Three auto attacks are required to increase the um, dot duration to seven seconds. Um, each basic attack increases the dot by one second, up to a maximum of three. And remember, after the first dot hits, or as the first dot hits, it's the only time you can auto attack for this to increase. Oh. Um. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. It's going to be hard to prove, kind of. When someone uses an ability, and a movement ability... Well, it's kind of hard to prove with these bots. Because, um, yeah, I mean, Neef doesn't like me and <laughs> doesn't backflip. Let's take my word for it. It says it here. While, while, debuff, while the debuff persists, enemies that use a movement ability can bust taking damage again. Right, this isn't really a debuff though. Like, it doesn't debuff the god in, like, any way. It doesn't give him a slow or anything. So I don't know why they chose debuff as a as a word because it doesn't uh, doesn't slow doesn't root it's not really a debuff it's just a constant of damage so as the let's just use the word debuff then because you know when the debuff occurs aka the dot if someone is if someone dashes or backflips as the dot's still on them they'll take bonus damage up to 180 max rank um, now let's go over, oh, these sigils do where, oh no, they must have been because I got empowered. Um, yeah, the sigils don't wear out until you're empowered. Right, so let's go over the sigils, right? You see the first diamond? That is always the first, your first ability and the uh, fear. You see, that is always that diamond. For the second diamond, it's the slow. Taste the wicked blade. 
for the third diamond, it's the minion. Not minion, like god decoy. And for the fourth one, it's the oh. dragon. And as you see here, I gain in power blade, which means I get double the magical power as I would get from a passive. Lasting 10 seconds. So at max rank, you gain 100, 100 magical power. And with empowered blade. Then the, um, the runes go. So remember, a first diamond, sinister. second diamond, third diamond, fourth diamond, fifth diamond, and you gain power. Now, one thing to note, you can have more than one the same rune on enemy gods. These runes last for 30 seconds, or should I say the marks last 30 seconds. I'm going to try and test something. Now, if my test is right, the first one will stay and the other four will go. So, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, you can refresh the mark duration. By casting the same mark again on the god. So... You can have this mark on them for a long time if you um, if you uh, cast the same mark on them. See if I cast another one now, it'll last. Go refresh the duration. So as you see here, let me just explain. This is 30 seconds, right? 29, 28, 27. If I was to hit it again, it goes back. It goes back to 30 and 29, 27, 28. So it refreshes the, the duration. Um, what else should I say here? I know I haven't gone around the all. I'm just looking at the wiki to see if there's anything interesting. So the pet is prioritised as a god by towers and minions, according to the wiki. Meaning, if a lane, if you were to throw this um, at a at the lane minions, not at a god, sorry, while there's a wave of minions there, it will target. The god. Um, and as you as you know, if I was to put minions here. A curse of agony. Oh, I can't prove that point, can I? I can't I can't prove the point because I need a god to be there to summon the So basically if this minion was to walk into the tower before the minions You'll target this before the minions. I mean, that's, it, it, that happens anyway. Just normal, normal gods. Um, it's not really important to know that. Right, let's go over a rule. Consuming power. See this cone? This consumes runes. Power is for those that can take it. <laughs> so, what happened there is... Um, this, for, for each rune that is on a god, um, the ult consumes the runes, meaning the runes will come flying back to you as your watch. Face the wrath of a sorceress Now, for each rune, they take how much damage? Um, yeah, 85 max rank per rune. So that is 5 times 85, let's just say 500 damage, something like that, because with the scaling. Now, Power is for those that can take it. as you saw, my cone didn't do damage to us because it that part of the ult requires a rune on the enemy god for it to do damage. It doesn't do damage otherwise. That's the part that consumes the runes. So if I was to have all runes on this Odin, Those fireballs indicate the runes, the marks that were consumed. Now there is a bug that I would like to go over real quick because I have tested this before and it's not worked. And I think, unless it means something else, but from the wording it says Morgan Le Fay becomes empowered, getting double the magical buff, power buff and reducing the cooldown of consuming power by 10 seconds before the symbols are drained. 
Now, let me just show you why this is a bug. It's not like a game breaking bug, it's a bug that it doesn't work. So let me just reduce my cooldown, right? Power is for those that can take it. I have a keep an eye on my ult, right? 88, 89. Let me just show you what I mean. I have to wait a second for this to come off cooldown. Right. Now, what's meant to happen after my sh sword stops glowing? It's supposed to take 10 seconds off my ult. Now, if you watch, it doesn't do that. This is a bug. Unless it, I don't know what else it could mean. I've tried different things. I've tried using the ult and consuming the runes and seeing if it, do it does anything there. It doesn't. It says. Morgan of Thay becomes empowered, gain double the magical power buff from reducing the cooldown of consuming power by 10 seconds before the symbols are all drained. It doesn't do that, it's, a, it's bugged. It doesn't work. It's meant to do that, but it doesn't. As you can say, do, see, the ult mobility is called consuming power. Um, now let's show you something else. This is broken, by the way. Taste the wicked blade! It's probably best if I. It's probably best if I do this against a bot, because then I can actually not have to walk over and get healed by the half time by accident. Arise and crush them! Right. Hit me! Hit me! Hit me! Face the wrath of a sorceress scorned. You see, I was healing now. That is because when you hit a god, you and damage of a fighter missing health per enemy god hit. God, this god is broken. Jesus Christ. If you if you hit a god, an enemy god of your all, for per god you hit you gain 15% healing of missing HP. Power is those that can take it. So you're healing. If you're low HP, you heal missing HP per enemy god hit. Um, so that is very important to know. You can't just throw it, it doesn't heal you um, just by throwing it, you have to hit a god. Um, now, another thing I'd like to show you, and you spawn your mirror because he's tanky. Sinister. Assuming the runes increases the width of your ult. Face the wrath of a sorceress scorned. Now I believe it's per rune that increases the ult's width. And does it say it here? Initial mark consumed increase the width of the energy projectile. Subsequent heals per projectile. Ah, oh, that's good. Subsequent hits per projectile is reduced by 50%. That's good. That's good they, they've added that. Alright, so... Power is with those yeah. that can take it. So per rune... Per rune, your width increases. If you have five runes, it's really wide. If you have one rune, it increases by... How much does it increase by? Does it say on the wiki? Current attack has a range of 70, projectiles have a range of 100. No, it doesn't say. It doesn't say on the wiki. Let me just, um... My both these runes here on this card. Embrace the burning shroud! Face the wrath of a sorceress spawned! Yep. Draco Mortis! So, per rune increases the width of the ult. Now, another thing about the ult, which I really, really like, because you're CC immune, as well in this all, you literally receive no movement penalty from casting this. Power is with those that can take it. Now, if you ca if you're in even the little slightest range, max range, with this all, literally, I don't think anyone can run from you from this from this all. Literally, look at how long this all is. Face 
Taste the wrath of a sorceress scorned. Look how long that is. Now you will now it might not look long on the tutorial I'm doing, but trust me, this this thing This thing is so far. If you're like if you are on the tip of the all against Morgan Le Fay and you're running away. You'll always hit them, I'm pretty sure. Unless like the su super fast, like they have um shield of regrowth or something. Um let's have a look what else. There's nothing really else to say about this god really. I mean you can have multiple Taste rooms. The wicked blade. On different you can have the same room on multiple gods. Now the runes do get consumed in the range of the cone. Look, these two will both have their runes consumed. Face the rock both of the sorcerer scorned. This goes through walls, goes through gods, goes through pretty much everything. I mean everything. Let's just say everything. Um Now now, oh, this is a good point to prove. Taste the wicked blade. I'm pretty sure the width of the all caps up five rooms. Sinister. Arise and crush them. Of agony. I stand. Power is for those that can take it. It's kind of hard to tell. But I think. Draco Mortis, embrace the burning shroud. Wait, that just went down on cooldown. Oh, my plans have yet to be realized. Why did that go down cooldown? Did you just. That went from four to like. Hang on. to repeat what I just did because that went down on cooldown. I, I tested this earlier so oh so it does work how come it didn't work earlier that is really weird now why did that not work earlier what did I do Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I get this right because there could be like a real misunderstanding here. Let me just let me just re let me just uh, reset my cooldowns real quick. That didn't work earlier. Hmm. So I tried casting Neil before the marks. Tried casting Neil when he had one mark. Um. So let me just try this then. Taste the wicked blade. Confused here because before it didn't work. I don't understand. Okay, so I don't remember what I did, what made it didn't work earlier. 
I'll probably look through the video and think I'm probably an idiot. Um, so basically, it does work. A curse of agony. A spell most sinister. If you get all five sigils, does that to be on? No, probably not on the same god. Just any any god, I'm pretty sure. So it does work, right? It does work. So if you get five runes and you're also on cooldown, and you're also on cooldown, um, you take 10 seconds off. So that's good to know. It still works. I don't know why I did earlier. I can't, I honestly can't remember. Okay, let's go over builds then with this character. Um, all right. I haven't looked over the patch notes, so I don't know if they nerfed or buffed anything. I've been seeing a lot of people go Spear the Magus, but I'm pretty sure that's the same as it used to be. Power can be I like taken. to go Sands of Time, Shoes of Magi, and then I'd like, then I'd go, I don't know, wait, this will be your start. And you're going to Shoes of the Magi, back into Rod, then if they have healing, go Divine Ruin. Their lives are all if you don't have healing, go soul gem. Soul gem. And go into Karen's coin. These can be switched either way. You can go Karen's coin first if you want to stack it. And go rod later. You can go Karen's coin to the soul gem there. And soul gem where Karen's coin is. You can do that too. But I like it like this. Um, then I'd go into... What do I normally... I can't remember. Rod, Magi, Soul Gem, Karen's Coin. Uh, I'm missing something. Oh yes, yeah, Soul Reaver. That's it. Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver is really good on Power Morgan Le Fay, as you can, as you can probably guess. You've got. You just literally can. Taste the wicked blade. Embrace the burning shroud. And that is a. That's a lot of damage. Um. Yeah, go Soul Reaver and fin go back into Pendulum of Ages. Now, I don't go Flat Pen because, honestly, I've not felt like I've been weak without it, you know. I don't think it's a necessity. But if you want to go Flat Pen, I'd suggest going Rod of Two Eves, using a Magi. And you could go, I wouldn't go Spear Desso because you, then you'll be overcovered. I'd go Spear the Magus if you're going to go any flat. Their lives are all forfeit. Then Soul Gem. Then you can go into Karen's Coin. But then, you know, you've, you've, your pen's late, your percent pen's late. So I'd go Karen's Coin here. Then finish up with Soul Gem. Then back into this and you've got 10... 30% CDR with the potion, you have 40%, you have 30% pen. Oh, yeah, one thing I want to myth boss real quick. I did say in one of my videos that uh, power pot gives 10% pen. Check your stores, I will need plenty more. It doesn't. I don't know, I don't know what video that was. Well, at the time, I did have 40% out of 40 magical pen. Must have been something I overlooked, but it doesn't give 10% pen, so that's cleared up. Then I'd sell boots or whatever you want, honestly. Um, Soul Reaver would be good if you've got this build here. Power can be taken. Oh, bored. This gives life steal. This gives life steal. If you really want to, you could finish capping off your seat, your pen, with Typhon's Fang. It's your extra, extra sustain. You gain the passive. In 10% pen, you gain the life steal. Because you got life steal here. Magus gives life steal. This gives life steal. So this wouldn't be bad. And again, there is a better things I think you could go. You could just go like a pure damage item, like do more. Their lives are all forfeit. Or um you could go power, pan, um, staff of maiden. This would be pretty nasty on this card. Power is for those that can take it. Imagine that, all in, right, and then dropping a two second fear with Maiden. Not bad, honestly. And it captures you. Oh, you've already overcapped then. 
10, 30, 40, then potion. And again, if you, if you wanted to go with this, you could get rid of soul gem for something else. Like, I don't know. It's like, you could just go Doom Orb or something. Soul Reaver. Power can be there's taken. no, there's no like, oh, there's no like one set build. I mean, there is like a good, there's diff, there is good builds and there is okay builds. Like, but there's no like cookie cutter build. Like, you can all, you can sometimes, you can always adapt. Is what I'm saying to the enemy comp. Now, if you don't want to go Pendulum of Ages, you can go Conduit Gem, and you can go Shoes. I like to go Shoes of Focus here. Because like, I'm missing the CDR out of um, my my um, sons of time. So now I go do on rod, into cooldown boots, back into rod. And then I like to go spear the magus. Power can be taken. Oh, and I'd like to go Karen's coin. And then I would like to go, I don't know, soul gem if you really if you want to go soul gem. Then 20 and you have 3% CDR, but then you can just sell boots for something like Desolation or Maiden or something. I'd probably sell it for Maiden. You know, it's a lot of power, good utility. Their lives are all forfeit. And, and you obviously you'll finish the star before selling boots. I mean, you can do either. I personally like Gem of Focus because um, this is a thing you can keep on. You can keep. If you keep on casting. You know, if you keep on casting, you can keep a the general focus passive, which gives you nine percent. Um, nine percent. What is it? Nine percent damage increase and two percent damage taken reduction. I mean, you could go um, Archmage's gem, but I really like this on a god that has, you're going to use one ability that just blows people up, like. Like New War, for instance, like you'll have this stack, you all, and then you hit everyone with the with the Archmage's gem. I did do say that over the New War video. For gods like Morgan Le Fay, though, where you're gonna cast a lot, you're gonna want Gem of Focus more because you can keep the passive up more. Arise and crush them. Because you'll be keep on, you'll keep on casting, right? Kind of like Chongar. Yeah, you refresh. Now. Why why would I not go my Archmage's Gem? Because if I go Archmage's Gem, let me show you. You see, it slowly ticks up, right? Five, six, right? Then once you use an ability, it takes away the stats. That's the hit of God. Right? But if you're going to cast a lot, you're not going to actually get a fully stacked Archmage's Gem unless, like, you're walking back to a fight or... Um... I don't know, you're out of combat and you poking each other at fire giant and you're just waiting for this to be stacked. By all means, go go this if you want. I mean, it's completely up to you. I like this build because if you went um, this instead... Oh yeah, I'm fouling. Not dummy. If you go this instead, alright? 9% damage increase, then you got... 25% extra magical power, which is essentially a damage increase from God's 50% uh, health or less. And you gain 7.5 damage increase, so you got 7.5, and you've got, this will be 34, no 34, I'm so bad at math man, no wonder I failed maths. Actually I didn't even fail maths, I actually got a C in it. 32.5, sorry. Plus 9 is 39.5, so 39.5% extra damage. That's why I like this kind of build. The one thing you're lacking with this kind of build though is CDR. Um, I've not tried tank Morgan Le Fay out. I don't... I mean, I guess it could be good. You could probably go... Um, you know, Warriors out. Vampiric Shroud. Because then you could probably go Warlock Sash and if you all pairs nice with you all because you'll have more HP then. Um, but remember, this is missing HP, not just flat heal. Um, oh yeah, combos, 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 combos. Honestly, this is the 
is power can be taken. I like to do this. Oh, one the wicked blade. dragon three. I like to do one dragon three. Um you can do three dragon one, but your dragon's hard to hit, so you want some sort of setup for it. Because this dragon, they're obviously not going to stand still for you the entire time. It's got some travel time on it, so I like to fear run. And like, pack, cast my three. You can two them if you're feeling, feeling, I don't know, cheeky. I completely missed everything now. Just to prove a point. You could do, you couldn't, if you're in like point blank range or someone's jumping on you, you could do this. Oh, I was gonna take some, take some, um. Arise and crush them! So you could two them and you could like. Um, fear them as well. So you could do this. Two. One, and like pop you through on them and run away. Um, could obviously get moon speed. If if they're like, say, if I don't know, um, fucking sea snow's jumping on your head and you can just do this and just run away. And then again, you don't even have to hit them with the three, so you could do two, three, two one, a curse of agony, three in front of you if you don't want to like turn behind to cast it and you get the moon speed anyway. Um, or you, there's been like countless times where I've used my, my ult just to get out of like Gilgamesh's ult or Susan ult. Because it's got like a, Gilgamesh is like a slow, um, and you want to get out of it, just cast your ult. Face the wrath of a sorcerer scorned. Um, also... Make sure you, you're you using your marks right, okay? Like, you want to stack your marks on gods. So when you ult, you do more damage. Now, there is an argument to be made. That, that albeit a very small one. Where you, just, where you just don't cast, I don't know, the slow field here. For this, do you see the second diamond? Well, you don't you don't cast an ability to fill that diamond, so you can just keep the magical power without without getting empowered and losing your stacks, essentially. Then again, like, I mean, it's not really much point. I mean, you could you could do it if you wanted. But like, you're missing a lot of power doing that, and you're gonna get your sigils back in. You see, I get, I got three sigils just off that. Um, so treat this like a Wukong clone, by the way. Taste the wicked blade. This kills the enemy gods. And go to oh, the next guy. My plans have yet to be realized. Um. Oh yeah, this is just basically Susano free, isn't it? Embrace the burning shroud. Oh, Susano free gets caught on minions. I'm pretty sure doesn't go through. I mean, it stops at gods and stops at minions. A curse of agony. That's interesting. Let's try this. Embrace the burning shroud. Okay. With some gods, right? Like Amaterasu, if you hit. The Odin. Like the reason why I thought the the da did you see the line? You see the line, like the two lines are going straight forwards adjacently through these Odins. Now I thought that maybe it would still like I don't know, do damage or something, because with Amaterasu, if you silence the Odin, it silences all the other Odins. So all the other all the other gods are in the actual uh, range of the of the um, three of the uh, dash sorry of the two lines. They should really change that. Uh, this is this could just this is for newer players like 
they could just think, wait, why is that not doing damage? Like, the, the, the lines are going now. We need to change that. Oh yeah, this goes through walls. To know. The main, the main one you're gonna want to use is your, your, um, your fear. It's really strong. Plus, your, your decoy, like, you can send it in to hit a tower, like, you could be pushing. But then again, like, you need to hit a god for that, so if there's a god over there and you want to get a decoy to hit the tower, but then again, it would hit the god first over the tower because obviously it hits the first target that's near it so it's not like Tiamat minions uh is that it i can't really because she's a new god there's no like little little tricks so this has been the um the morgan le fay guide sorry there's not been much guides recently i've been playing another game wasteland 3 and um yes i I'm not late. I've not been lazy, it's just more, um, I've been playing that more than this, but then, you know, this god game, I was like, yes, let's play something. Um, let me know what cards you want to see next, let me know if you noticed anything I missed, and please pop it down in the comments. Obviously, we're all new to this god, um, she's really fun, I suggest playing her, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.